Hey guys, this is Prasoon, a first year medical student, and today I am going to elaborate on my experience with the first internal exams in our college in the form of this vlog. And it's my first vlog, so I'm pretty excited. In the process, I'm also going to share my preparation strategy, books that I read, important questions for written and viva exams, the questions asked to us in viva exam, a bit of motivation for those aspiring to be doctors, and in the end, you will be seeing a short documentary of my own viva. As always, timestamps are available for easy access and don't forget subscribing if you are new. So I have 12 days for internal exam preparation which is also coincidentally the end semester exam of our first semester. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's go with anatomy first. I use Gray's Anatomy Student Edition for concept revision. It is undoubtedly the best book for learning and revising concepts if there is no time limit. Grace Anatomy is what happens when you merge the best-in-class gross anatomy textbook with an atlas having beautiful illustrations. I use BD Chaurasia for short notes and long answers of upper limb and head and neck. Though many of my friends use Visram Singh for head neck because it's easy to understand. But since I have Grace, I had no problem understanding it from BDC. I use Diffuse Atlas for histology and here you can see me in my diagram practice session. It has really beautiful and easy to understand diagrams. Similarly, I use Langman for embryology. This cannot be considered workout, but even in these stressful conditions, you shouldn't forget to give at least 5 minutes to the body a day. In physiology, I used Guyton for completing the unfinished chapters, then for making answers of short notes and long questions, and then revise the whole book. But hey, Prasoon, doesn't reading so much cause fatigue? Well, it does, but a change in environment and some music can wash away that within minutes. As I would be pointing out many a times in this video, it is important to listen to your body however stressful your days are, so that it keeps up with you. After reading continuously in a seated posture, your back starts to ache. What I do in such a condition is not so unique. Yeah, I just take my books to the bed, which is trust me is not an effective way to read a book. Your mind doesn't walk to its potential in this posture, but at least it's better than procrastinating. Like here I am reading Ganong for cardiovascular physiology and neurotransmitters because they were incomplete by my side from this book. And also since I have read this topic before from Guyton, I don't have to tire out my already tired out mind at the end of the day, which will in turn increase my study time and decrease the chance of falling asleep in this posture. Okay, this time it might be a failure, but let's continue our journey. My intention is to gain as much knowledge as possible by taking this internal exam as a short term goal. Not just because marks of internals hardly matter, but it's like fooling your brain to a do or die state, so that it speeds up its function to accomplish humongous tasks in a short time. Okay, I'm done with anatomy and physiology and I have 3 days left before our first internal exams. So I have to complete biochemistry in 3 days, which is practically possible, like technically. Whenever everything seems to be going easy, life throws you challenges. So here I am going on a long drive instead of studying in my room because we were asked to have our COVID test done before the class reopens. Anyways, for now I guess I will stick to reading stuff on my mobile and uh, enjoy this natural beauty when I am on the way. As I was reviewing my older videos in our long drive, I realized that I have never talked about my college life. And it's not just in the videos, it's been a while since I've talked about it to anyone. That's because going from being praised as the next big thing from your state to being just an average guy just because you flunked an exam comes with a huge shock. But today I've gathered the courage to do so, all thanks to my college, SCB Medical College Qatar. Man, I don't want this to turn out to be a travel vlog, but the distance between my house and my college is 24 kilometers. And our classes were suspended, so we were not living in our hostel right now. So yeah, bear with me, okay. So SCB MCH is a big name in Odisha, my state, for being the oldest and best in class medical college and hospital. Here I realized that getting into your dream medical college 
is 100% worth it to put your 100% into but it's not even 1% worth repenting for. Whatever happens in life happens for a reason. Let's say the AIMS UG exam for which I was preparing for years wouldn't have been cancelled and let's also add NTA not making NEET and GMN easier than boards which caused rank inflations and whatnot. What more could have happened? I could have got into a bigger medical college, possibly my dream college AIMS Delhi, could have found a more competitive environment to run again in the race that has already consumed 4 years of my life and presumably may have got more research opportunities. But I should have missed my family, that homely feeling in my motherland and above all my mom's food. As far as academics is concerned, I am still learning the same things any medical student, be in central, state or private medical college is studying and we are all together going to appear for the same exams. So is it really worth chasing after your dreams? Definitely. That's what makes us humans after all. But is it worth repenting after failure? Absolutely not. Ever since I have started making YouTube videos and participating in CMEs and quizzes, I have received 3 research offers from renowned faculties of our state and there has never been a single day I have not enjoyed learning new things from my favorite books and lectures. After all, life is good until you make it good. Consistency is the key. Okay, now I feel more like Farhan explaining his passion to his father in 3 days. So let's get back into our story. Okay, it was cool and all and I really enjoyed the day out. But uh, today I have to pull an all-nighter because half of my day just got wasted. Okay. What's your name? Now I have a time limit of 2 and a half day for biochemistry. I am using Lippincott for vitamins and minerals chapter revision and Harper for the rest of the chapters and Vasudevan for short notes and long answer type questions. These important theory topics of physiology, biochemistry and finally anatomy were shared to us by our faculties in our whatsapp group just kept them in mind while reading the chapters from books. Written exams have been a smooth sail until now and to stop our vivers from wrecking our ship, uh, we have to start our preparation. And we just have the weather for that. There is nothing that can calm ourselves as much as sound of the rain does when standing. There is actually a problem, I just have one day for each viva. Yeah. Let's do what we can. But first things first, let's save this beer before Bhaiwas because it's manners. I was so lost in my studies that I didn't have any idea what's happening outside. But it's a storm, I'm afraid. Now I am tired as hell like doing all this in one day and it's already 5 o'clock. 
like 5 o'clock in the morning 5 a.m and our exam is at 9 a.m uh, so i may not get time to sleep today and uh, it was true guys like <laughs> sleep is a luxury during exams by the way continue watching this video you are going to see some really creative stuff after this and if you are curious how i study late night and stay awake during exam time you can watch my study with me fighting sleep video I'll link in description remember that sleep is good for health so that video is made for only these do or die times when you have to complete a task at hand before yes before tomorrow or you have uh, like exams uh, recently very recently and you have to finish your task today even though most of the tips won't take a toll on your health and if you think this is a very weird way to sell myself you are right by the way did i mention that i have two chapters of histo still remaining at 5 am in the morning it's another all night Hey there, my anatomy viva just ended. Don't know how much I will get and I don't want to think about it because tomorrow is my physiology practicals and I am half asleep. So yeah, I have to prepare for it without sleeping. I hope this is not another all night. Okay, so our anatomy viva was completely based on practicals. Like we were shown pictures and videos of practicals and dissection and whatnot and we were required to answer those questions. Here I have outlined the topics on which questions were asked to me in the Viva. I really wanted to make an educational documentary on it but halfway through my script I realized that it is impossible at least for anatomy. So yeah, I will fulfill that wish of yours in physiology and biochemistry just like I did in the KBPY interview video. If you haven't watched then link is in description. Go and check it out. Namaskar sir. Namaskar. Roll 165. Prasanna. Yes sir, that's me but it's uh, Prasoon actually. Okay, Prasoon. Explain myasthenia gravis. It's an autoimmune disease causing muscle weakness due to inability of neuromuscular junctions to transmit the signals uh, due to reduced acetylcholine receptors or loss of postjunctional folds or increased acid. Treatment. Treatment of myasthenia gravis. Cholinester is inhibitors. Yeah, yeah, but which one? Name it. Neostigmin, peridostigmin. During what time of day are symptoms aggravated in myasthenia gravis? Like morning, evening, night time, do you know? Or they remain the same? Like as the day progresses, since the muscle gets weaker with exercise, so it should aggravate during evening and night time. Yes, yes, the symptoms aggravate with exercise. Okay, RBC versus WBC pipettes. First of all, there is one red and white weed respectively. Like the calibration in RBC pipettes is 101 above the bulb, that is the bulb is larger so it can dilute like 200 times max while in WBC calibration it's, uh, it's 11 so it can dilute up to 20 times and RBC pipette is uh, slow speed because of narrow capillary bore while WBC one is fast speed. For what else can the RBC pipette be used for? Like other than RBC count? Yes. Sir, it can be used for measuring WBC count in leukemia patients. Uh, basically, since it can dilute 200 times, it is used every time there is an increase in the count of anything. WBC count in leukemia patients. Do you know any other condition in which it is used? Like uh, dust particle versus WBC. How can you differentiate under a microscope? There is a halo around WBCs. Why is cedar wood oil used in oil immersion microscopy? Like it removes the thin layer of air between lens and object. And also it has the same refractive index as the lens. What is Landsteiner's law? And name an exception to the law. The Landsteiner's law. The first law states that if an agglutinogen is present in RBC, the corresponding agglutinin must be absent from the plasma. And the second law states the opposite, like that if an agglutinogen is absent in RBC, the corresponding agglutinin must be present in plasma. Like the exception is that Rh negative patients lack both the antigen and antibody. Well, according to the law, they should have had the antibody. Does erythroblastosis fetalis happen in first baby? 
no so generally the first wave if an rh negative mother doesn't suffer any complications unless there is leakage of blood through the placental barrier what are molecular motors like a class of proteins that uh, drive intracellular trafficking by converting chemical energy to mechanical work uh, for example myosin uh, kinesin uh, dynein then is actin no sir no sir protodiastole in the brief period uh, during which there is a backflow of blood associated with the closure of the outing and pulmonary valves define erythropoiesis development of uh, mature red blood cells from erythropoietic stem cells as the viva continued they understood that i could answer practical and clinical based questions pretty well so they focused their attention on uh, definitions instead in the last part of the interview what happens in such a case that they have known your potential and have marked you well now they are asking questions yes, and uh, finding a way to provide you with uh, some extra marks some additional marks okay so the exams went well as you have seen already but i feel like i couldn't give my best uh, because of the lack of sleep so an important lesson learned uh, sleep well before exams anyways the purpose of these exams is to set a small term target to overall finish the syllabus in the long term for your long term goal that is uh, it may be usmle or it may be pg exams or it may be anything else so the marks in these exams don't matter at all it is the preparation that matters even though i said all that i fell asleep minutes after my viva was over and my mom took a video of it i'm not talking to her anymore until i feel really hungry it's not raining today so i could give 5 minutes to the body in this way since i'm a medical student i'm still wearing two masks because as you know we should not compromise with anyone's safety because of any reason okay i will take three more rounds and we will call it a day That's a good replacement. Uh, let's go study now. The weather is back again. Luck is in our side, guys. Let's go. For biochemistry, Viva, I am blurting out the questions without mentioning the answers because that would be more interesting for you to answer it yourselves. And also, I am feeling a little lazy. Rule 165, Prasun Patnaik. How is glucose transported inside cells? Answered. Which gluten is insulin independent? Answered. Where is it present? Answered. Uh, sorry. Is the RBC one insulin independent? Just told it in my previous answer. Don't know why I was asked again, but answered. RBC membrane stability depends on answered. Name some tripeptides. Answered. Yeah, right. Glutathione is a tripeptide. So, tell me the composition, no? Shit. I mean, I just forgot at the right time. Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. Important checkpoints in glycolysis. Answered. Why is leucine glucogenic? Answered. Rapid purpural test, uh, principal and action. Quick, quick, quick. Answered. I also learned that you should not say I think or give that kind of uh, not so sure expression to the viva, like to the interviewer, because uh, the more confident you act in the viva, the better. So the internals are a thing of the past now. So are half of my hair, but it was fun, I guess. And uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, don't go without subscribing, and I will catch you again in the next video. Bye.